did we actually get through that without it freezing? Did that really happen? <laughs> and I haven't changed a single thing. It's, um, it just worked this week. First time ever since um, I think I, I started putting that little intro tune on. Uh, so wonders never cease. Anyway, cheers, everyone. It is Friday, and it is cold, and it's the end of the week, and it's time for a beer. Cheers, everyone. Oh, dear me. That tasted really rather like it could be the first of many. Um, so hope everyone's had a fantastic week. Um, I've... Um, I've got a bit of an update, as you can see. The uh, the big sort of cage thing that was on my hand is no more. Um, well, not quite no more. I still have to wear it in bed, but um, you know, it's uh, it's it's we're on the road. We're on the right, in, going in the right direction. Let's uh, let's have a wander up to the top of the chat and see who was first in. Um, oh, and I would have sworn it would have been rent to kill, but he was he wasn't. He was second in pipped at the post by PFY guitars. So <coughs> excuse me. So as I said, we've got PFY guitars, rent to kill. There's a relaxing meditation, uh, Ian Clark, who's currently in the sciatica club. You have my sympathies, mate. Uh, hot water bottles and Nurofen or Cocodamol if you can get your hands on it. Uh, but definitely the hot water bottle thing worked for me over Christmas. Um, really very effective. Uh, then we've got theme tunes Terry Day, Steve Entwistle, Maria Davis, uh, Peter Collins, Grandpa Joe, uh, who's saying it's cold and snowing here in Staten Island, New York City. Uh, starting off, uh, weekend off with John, then Steve Cassidy. It's always a great day. Yes, don't forget, straight after this, uh, go and watch uh, Steve's live stream. Um, you know, it's uh, it's a <laughs> well. I'd like to say I'm going to go and uh, I'm, I'm going to watch it live, but I'm not because I'm going to go out and pick up a curry. Uh, but anyway, uh, certainly worth watching. Uh, then we've got Steve Hill, Anton, Johnny Randoms, in so is Mark Kerno. Um, Mark Kerno, uh, your good lady wife has been in touch with me and uh, wishes me uh, to um, convey to you our birthday wishes um you're hitting your half century uh this coming week aren't you 24th of jan so happy birthday i think is that wednesday happy birthday for wednesday uh and you can have a beer with us all tonight in in anticipation of that uh nice one mate i remember being 50 um i was uh, i was 50 very recently I'll, uh, i was 56 even more recently uh then we've got peter nicholson rob bald is in and joe mcmurray amadeus is in so is savvy 64 uh mr chris 52 54 uh wishing me uh me hand is better um uh, what are you saying there, mate? Um, have you ever used any of those wireless guitar bug loads on uh, loads on the market? I, I did have a um, a Lacart or wireless system once that worked fine until it didn't, and I've just never got round to replacing it. Um, then I see we've got. Um, um, David James, Cal Texper, sometimes Dim Never Thin, Stuart Young, Dr. Gomez, one, Michael Purcell, and then there's John Mack and Nathan. There's Mr. Toonan, uh, Edwin, I'm drinking uh, your favourite beer again this evening at the Heineken. Um, he's in Germany at the moment, um, uh, in, in German, drinking the beer, watching Beer O'Clock Stream. Heaven does exist. Uh, there's Cylon Hybrid, Dave Snack Stevens, and Sean House, and there's David Evans as well. Um, Rob Bold scored uh, an as new Harley Benton SC552 uh, AMG pickup. Oh, okay. 230. 230 pounds that that is a steal mate um i used to have the esc 552 but mine had the uh tesla pickups in it uh there's dave fiendish in and we got ben allmark we got randy upchurch deco dude and david mitchell timbo is in as well there's vincent brennan stephen hedger and uh being very complimentary about my um about my playing on that guthrie govan signature model uh yesterday a lot of people saying your hands are covered no it hasn't that was uh, filmed that video was filmed uh, about a week before um you know the, the mishap with the dog lead happened and my finger uh, got taken out the game for a little while uh 
Then there's Stephen Sproson, John Channing, Cal B in the Rock or Cap, Chris Otwell, 60s man. And we've got Colin Falcon is in as well. And we've got Bass at Night. Uh, who else? Peter S. Dan Bernston. How are you, mate? Nice to see you. Uh, then Frank Bolum uh, is in. So is Gary Shaw. Uh, nice one, mate. Nice to see you. Uh, the Essex cat is there. So is Triple Distilled Martin Bix. Uh, Peter, Peter Williamson. Pablo Hank is there. So is Rexomatic, all the way from Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, we've got Gordo Canuck, uh, Thomas Mulvaney, Brad Dowell, Neil Roberts, and uh, Nick Pilson, there's Johnny, uh, snowed in in Oregon. I hope you've got plenty of beer to kind of see you through the uh, the blizzard, mate. Um, uh, Neville Ray is in, so is Mott the Hoople 2010, and Ian Stewart, broadsword calling Danny Boy, indeed. <laughs> yes, one of the films I think I watched over Christmas, although Christmas is something a bit of a blur. If you don't know what I'm referring to, Where Eagles Dare. If you watch that movie, um, every time Richard Burton says broadsword calling Danny Boy, take a drink, you will not reach the end of the film sober. Uh, there's Steve Cassidy Guitar, the aforementioned chap who will be going live straight after me. Uh, David Evans, uh, we've already said you haven't we, mate. There's Lefty Pick. Uh, John Fletcher is in Graham Campbell. And who else we got? Um, oh, Mark Kernel, thank you, mate. You're welcome. I uh, said, I said uh, I'd give you a bit of a shout out. Uh, then who else have we got? We got Michael Purcell. Uh, I think I already said you, but there, I haven't said Maiden Man 74, and he's in there. There's on Road again. Uh, hey, up, Big John. Do you, let's put you up on the screen. Uh, do you have any experience and thoughts on uh, Yamaha SG SA guitars, the old models and not the newer Revstar models, which I don't think are as good? Cheers and happy Friday, sir. Well, the uh, the Revstar, I had a Revstar, and it was, it was a close-run thing, whether I uh, kept the Revstar or kept the Les Paul. Uh, and the Les Paul just pipped it, but um, I vaguely remember playing uh, a Yamaha SG back in the 80s and thinking this is rather nice, but I haven't played one since. Um, so that's a bit of a bucket list to try and get my hands on one of those, I think. Um, and there's Ravi, and uh, who else we got? I think we may have uh, reached the end now. Oh, there's Jimmy James, though, uh, sneaking in up the rear, and uh, Steel Horse 75, and I think that is pretty much it. Um, yes, just to get it all out there, because um, I don't want this live stream tonight to turn into, um, you know, somebody who watched it last week said it was about one third of the live stream was uh, talking about your finger. So let's get this all out of the way now, okay? Uh, I'm out of the splint. And there is some mobility in the finger, but not quite enough to play with yet. Um, there may be options I can do, like I can manipulate the finger into the correct playing position. So um, maybe some kind of uh, mechanical device, maybe some kind of brace that can uh, fit on my finger that won't interfere with the playing. Uh, that could be one way forward if the re rest of the mobility doesn't come back. We are looking at um, sort of the beginning of March before I'll know for certain whether that kind of action will be uh, of you know, a necessity. Um, you know, the... Um, I, I, as, as a fallback plan, I, as you will see, well, you saw last week, I did the uh, that dire straight solo, um, twisting by the pool. I did that with three fingers, and I'm starting to, um, you know, kind of have a bit of fun playing. And, you know, it's it's twenty five percent of this hand is no longer working, so it's just a, a question of whether I can distribute that twenty five percent around the other fingers. Um, it's looking promising at the moment for being able to do that. The only thing I may have to do is go down to um, some lighter gauge strings. Um, you know, I'm I'm finding tens a little bit of a a little bit of a battle at the moment. Um, so I'm thinking about maybe going down to nines or possibly even eights. Um, you know, we shall see. But um, you know, it's it's just going to be a I'm not going to say I'm, I'm not going to say I'm glad that this has happened, but it's it's um, it's been a an, an enlightening and interesting and engaging process uh, learning to play in a slightly different way again. I'm not going to say it's been a fun thing to do because it's anything but that, uh, but it has been um, you know sort of um, 
interesting to see how I, how, how I can adapt. Uh, so there you go. Um, oh, anyway, it's about time I told you what's coming up on the channel this week, isn't it? Um, uh, one thing I will say is, the final thing about the, the finger is, I don't shoot the videos that you see in the same sequence that you see them. Okay, so, you know, um, there are going to be some videos where I'm still in the sling uh, and maybe the next day I'll be kind of looking a bit more like this. Um, so, you know, I'm sorry if that's confusing, but it's just, you know, I've got to, the videos that take longer to do, I've got to start earlier, if you see what I mean. So, with that in mind, um, yeah, oh, uh, the uh, Sunday's video, uh, I'm, I'm thinking ahead to Monday's video, but Sunday's video, well, you know what that's going to be. That is the full-on review of the Charvel Guthrie Govan signature model that you saw me playing yesterday. What a fantastic guitar. If th That guitar, if, if any, is the one that could get me back into, you know, Stratocaster kind of territory. I just wish that it was Telecaster shaped and had a fixed bridge, that's all. Um, and no middle pickup. <laughs> Um, anyway, uh, no, but it, it is a beautiful guitar and I am going to be uh, doing the full review of it on Sunday. Then on Monday, um, a video that I shot when I didn't know how long it was going to be before I was going to be able to play again, <clears throat> a solo analysis. Which solo are we looking at? Well, we're going to be looking at one of the solos from the uh, Charvel Guthrie Govan review. I'm taking, um, you know, uh, special pleading to uh, take a look at one of my own solos uh, because I didn't have to play it all over again, um, you know, which I couldn't do at the time. As, as you'll see on Monday, I was still in the sling. Um, so that is that. Just basically breaking down what I did on the demo that you're going to see on Sunday. Then Tuesday is, as always, a top five video, top five Tuesday. And what I'm discussing is um, the five best, in my opinion, guitar tones ever committed to tape. And most of these were recorded during the days of recording to tape. Um, I've done similar videos to this in the past. Um, you know, but nothing, but it's been a while. And as I always say with these, uh, with these kind of list videos, you know, ask me again next week and it could all be different. Um, so I think it was probably about 2018, 2019 when I did the, um, the, the, the earlier version of this video. Uh, so the five best guitar tones ever recorded the tape. So I'm talking about specific, like this guitar tone on this song by this player, that kind of thing. Um, then on Wednesday, uh, a viewer's question, um, which is what Wednesdays are all about. It's, uh, I often get asked, you know, by people who are thinking about taking online guitar lessons, either with someone like me or, well, someone like me or, you know, someone who does the same sort of thing I do, because I guess since the whole kind of lockdown kind of thing, a lot of guitar teachers did what I did and, you know, kind of started doing lessons via zoom and down a down a webcam and a lot of people fancy doing it uh but they're just you know a bit intimidated by the technology what exactly do you need to be able to have online guitar lessons what equipment do you need uh well surprisingly little as you will see on Wednesday, because that is the topic I'm addressing, and you'll get to meet one of my uh, students as well, a uh, charming fellow called uh, Darren, who is one heck of a player. And uh, then on Thursday, uh, we are going to be uh, seeing if we can essentially turn um, a sow's, uh, make a silk purse out of a sow's ear, um, not the, uh, the, the satellite, Les Paul copy behind me there. I've decided that is going to stay exactly as it is, as a little time capsule. But you'll remember that uh, last week I did the um, the Jet JT JT350, the sort of uh, Telecaster-y kind of thing with the uh, nice sunburst body um, and the tortoiseshell pick guard and the roasted maple neck and all of that. Well, that is currently not here. It's currently getting fettled up by Agra Jag guitars. Uh, getting some uh, some of their magic fairy dust sprinkled on it. And I'm going to tell you exactly what they're going to be doing to it on Thursday. It's uh, The video is called Big Plans for a Budget Guitar. And that takes us to Thursday. And we know what happens after Thursday, don't we? We're back on the beer again because it's Friday. 
talk amongst yourselves, chaps, while I just pour myself another cold one. Um, and uh, let's see what how flaky this one's going to be. You, see, you can see I can uh, I can actually hold a beer glass. Now let's uh, let's get the angle right. There we go. I did say to the physiotherapist, um, you know, do you want this splint back? And she says, um, well, you can either you can give it back. I said, she said, but um, you know, all we do is incinerate them. I said, can I come and watch? You know, <laughs> that would have been my plan for it. You know, kind of burn the damn thing. Um, but I still have to wear it. Um, you know, when I'm when I'm sleeping. Anyway, um, on. Uh, what we saying, Deco dude? John, I'm setting up a guitar with nine to forty-two. Uh, is okay. Mick Green called my, my pal a pussy when he had nines on. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, I, I, I back in the eighties, I used to use eight gauge strings. Graduated to nines, and then went up to tens. And the the reason I did that was it was just like, why do I keep breaking strings all the time? Um, and I, I, on tens, I very rarely break strings, but um, needs must at the moment. I'm afraid. On road again is asking, John, what job do you think you would would have if you weren't a guitar teacher or YouTuber? Well, the original plan was uh, when I was a kid growing up, I was um, I had two hobbies, two interests. One was uh, music and playing the guitar. Oh, I see we've got the lamb in. Nice to see you in there, mate. Uh, one was uh, playing the guitar and making music, uh, and the other was uh, tinker out. Amateur radio and tinkering around, tinkering around with electronics, um, and um, you know, in this part of the world, in the early nineteen eighties, you didn't go to your parents or your careers master and say, "I want to be a rock star. I want to be a musician." It was like, "Get yourself a proper job." Uh, <clears throat> so um, I went down the electronics route. I studied to be a, a merchant navy radio officer, um, and. Passed most of the electronics um, qualifications, but uh, due to two factors. One, um, the fact that I was a bit lazy as a student, I will fully admit that. And two, the fact that I was um, absolutely useless, useless beyond belief at Morse code. I didn't get the, uh, the radio officer qualification, but I did get enough... Um, electronics qualifications to go and work in the electronics industry and that's that was my plan i had a job uh, that i got in 1988 uh, not long after leaving college where i started off as an assistant uh, engineer and then graduated up to engineer and you know the career path was plotted out for me i would have become like a team leader then a supervisor then possibly you know kind of um you know, manager, you know, at which point I would have uh, got a different colored jacket because we all used to have to wear the uh, the, the company livery uh, in this factory where I worked. And, uh, you know, once you got to, uh, you know, that kind of level. So, but then uh, basically there was a, um, a a big kind of scare in the, in the media in the, in the early 90s about microwave ovens were they really safe you know is your food safe if it's been cooked in a microwave oven and a good 70 percent of the customers for of the of the um company i worked for were microwave oven manufacturers and um you know their sales slumped our company had to lay people off and i was one of the layoffs stuck an advert in uh, the local paper guitar lessons and here i am 33 years later um uh so that has been my journey uh, to be honest with you now um uh, i've been self-employed as i say for 33 years i just don't think i would take very well to having you know um a line manager a boss a hr department and and, and all of that kind of stuff that uh people have to deal with these days um it, it just wouldn't sit well with, I, I think i would be fired within the day uh because i said something that i thought was completely innocuous um you know but had um you know ruffled somebody's feathers uh so there you go uh, that, that was a bit of a long-winded answer wasn't it but um uh on road again uh when when the doctor asks how many beers do you have on an average week what do you say um 
Oh well, I think I think that one's going to stay. <laughs> to be honest with you, the doctor doesn't ask that. Um, you know, the, the doctor always asks how many units of alcohol I've drunk. Now, um, I take a unit of alcohol as as meaning, you know, a case of beer, because that's what that's one unit of alcohol that I put in the supermarket trolley when I go shopping. So for me, that's one unit of alcohol. So I always answer truthfully how many units of alcohol um I, I have in a week and he seems satisfied with the answer and you know if he's happy don't upset the man you know that's all i'm saying um let's see what else we've got to talk about um uh one of the greatest unanswered questions of our time is does your chewing loom chewing gum lose its flavor on the bedpost overnight um i can well i, I can tell you uh, that the chewing gum doesn't lose its flavor on the bus seat overnight um you ever done that thing when you sat on the bus and you start kind of because it's a long bus journey and you're bored and you start picking at the underneath of the seat and, oh, what's that Oh, it, it, it smells minty, you know, and then the realisation dawns and you recoil from it. So um, I would say probably not. Um, Steve Cassidy guitar saying, John, at your height, surely you allowed a couple more than average. Um, yeah, well, that's, that, that's my reckoning as well, mate. You know, and in the words of um, Sir Winston Leonard Spencer Churchill, I have taken a great deal more from alcohol than it has ever taken from me. Uh, and uh, that is my year. Uh, I'm, I'm 57 years old in a few weeks' time. You know, gone is any pretension that I am middle aged. You know, 57, you pass the halfway mark by some margin, frankly. So, you know, you get to this point, it's managed decline, isn't it? And I'll choose how I manage it. Thank you very much. Um, uh, Michael Purcell, what you're saying, mate. I always wanted to do electronic, but can never get training because I was in Tipperary and training was in Dublin. Um, fair enough, mate. But I had to. I had to um, the, the, the college I went to was um, quite a, a distance away from me. Um, it was, um, you know, in the Lake District, which has left me with an abiding love for for that part of the world. Uh, whenever me and the missus. Uh, go away for a break that's always where we go now we've got this fantastic little um bed and breakfast i would say bed and breakfast you think bed and breakfast and you think like a guest house this is a four-star country house hotel you know the only thing that isn't a, that makes it only a bed and breakfast is they don't have a licensed bar and they don't do evening meals but you're talking four poster beds in the rooms and you know sauna jacuzzi swimming pool fantastic place um the old vicarage in ambleside if anybody uh, fancies a nice break over there um oh edwin tonan thank you sir you are a gentleman um all the best with your handmate sponsorship for the heineken thank you mate um you're a gentleman um let's have a look uh Stuart Young is saying, I qualify for the state pension in a couple of months. We'll make a nice wee guitar fund. Yep, well, um, I'm not so far off at myself. You know, it's it's not on the immediate horizon, but it is, you know, kind of, um, let's put it this way. It's, well, 57, or I will be in a few weeks. It's, what, it's eight years away. Uh, if this next eight years goes as quick as the last eight years, then it will come round in a flash. And... Um, you know, by then, well before then, you know, this place will be bought and paid for. So just just a shot across the bows, chaps, you know, I am, uh, retirement is um, maybe not on the immediate horizon for me, but it is, it is uh, something that I am starting to plan for. So at some point, um, you know, whilst the Friday live streams and we're drinking beer and talking nonsense will continue, um, you know, the, the, the YouTube output may go down a little bit, um, in, you know, after that after that date. Um, on road again saying, cheers, John. Enjoy Bengal Spice tonight with a few bevies. Oh, I intend to. Uh, uh, let's see what else I've missed. Um, 
uh, Raymond Galfredi uh, is in. Uh, uh, wait, <laughs> I got here a bit late. Is there a body sewn into the sack in the corner? You're referring to, let me lean that way. No, that is uh, the duvet that you that whenever this room is uh, used as a, as a guest room when we had uh, a mate of mine staying over Christmas. Um, that's the duvet that goes on there. And it's usually stored in one of those kind of vacuum bags. Um, but... When I tried to put it back into the vacuum bag, um, you know, it just wasn't, you know, you know, they shrink. It just wasn't shrinking. And then I realized that's because there's a big rip in the bottom of it. So um, I've got a new vacuum bag downstairs, but I just haven't got around to um, to putting it, putting the duvet back in there. And then it'll go in the kind of, in the top of the wardrobe in the other room. So, no, it, it does look a bit like that, though, doesn't it? Yes. Uh, <laughs> looks like, you know, um, you know, someone's upset me and they've... Um, you know, I've, I've, I've you know, done the done a dirty deed on them. Um, um, it'll be sixty-seven for me, John says. Chris Otto. Well, yes. Well, you know, um, um, if I live that long, frankly, <laughs> you know, Doctor Gomez one is saying, "How is Dougal? Dougal has well, Dougal has two kind of settings. He has angelic, and he has demonic." And he uh, he spent the morning in angelic mode, and he spent the afternoon in uh, demonic. Um, you know, he's just um, crying to go out the back door. So you let him out, and he goes out. Well, why am I out here? What's going on? What's happening? And then um, you know, some rubbish has blown into the backyard. So, oh, that looks interesting. I'm going to eat. I'm going to eat that. You know. So he's this afternoon. It was the cellophane off. Um, you know, the out the outer skin of a packet of cigarettes that I had to get out of his mouth. Um, you know, but th then he tied himself out. Last I saw of him, he was asleep in my chair downstairs. Um, and uh, he's got his he's got his good boy lugs on at the moment because I mentioned um, nan bread, and he does love a bit of nan bread. Um, so, Maria Davies is saying, um, "Will you be doing any curry videos, John?" Well, as I said last week, first uh, of February. Um, there was a, uh, uh, which is a Thursday and Thursday is kind of my wild card slot because Mondays are all about solo analysis. Tuesdays are top five, uh, lists. Wednesdays, are uh, you know, viewers questions, uh, Sundays, are or Fridays are live streams and Sundays are usually kind of an excuse to have a jam, basically usually a guitar review or something like that. But the Thursday video slot is, is where I tend to put something else. Uh, anything else that doesn't fit into those categories. And on Thursday, the 1st of February, there will be a cookery video coming up. It's not curry uh, because um, when I filmed it, there was still curry in the freezer. Um, so, you know, it's it's I'm cooking a, a casserole, basically, showing you how I do a, a, a gorgeous winter casserole full of meaty goodness. Um, and, uh, that, that's what's coming up then. And I'm just going to wait and see how that video goes down because it, it's so off piste for what I do on this channel that it might, it, it'll either go one of two ways. It'll go kind of absolutely ballistic and yeah, we love this kind of content, do some more, or it'll get like 300 views or something or less. Um, so if that's the case, I shall refrain from doing any, any other videos of that kind, but if it, if it gets a... Um, if it gets an average or above response, then yes, I will do a video on uh, on curry. Uh, let's have a look, see what's going on. Uh, uh, Michael Purcell is saying, do you have a, uh, a throw or towel for Douglas? I think you mean Dougal. Uh, I did so that she wouldn't uh, try to tear anything. Um he has this annoying kind of habit of, you know, you get to think, right, okay, there's something you can go to town on the sun, knock yourself out, and um, and he'll kind of play with it for a bit, and then it's like, yeah, I'm bored with that now, I'm going to rip the cushions to bits. Um, <laughs> you know, or not necessarily the cushions, but it, he's he is that 
t uh, if he was a human, he'd be the child that gets an expensive toy for Christmas and then spends all of uh, the rest of the day playing with the cardboard box that came in. You know, it, it's uh, <laughs> that's a bit what he's like, and that's part of his charm, to be honest with you. Uh, um, let's have a look at what Mr. Chris is saying. Uh, John, three packs of 10 Mr. Smith for £24. Uh, not sure what you mean there, mate. Uh, three packs of 10 Mr. Smith for £24. Um, no, uh, you'd have to elaborate more there. Can you remember RSC Hi-Fi? Um, uh, those shit foul fears, 5100s. Um, yeah, I... I, I I, you're asking me if I can remember various things, mate, and clearly my reaction is, no, I can't, I'm afraid. Um, I am apo apologise about that, but uh, th thanks for the um, for the attempted memory anyway, mate. Um, uh, Ian Mason is saying, have you thought of doing an Aqualung solo analysis? Well, I hadn't until you mentioned it, mate, but let's just put that down. Jethro Tull. Aqualong. You know, great riff on that song. Da, 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 da. Um, you know, they're, they're one of those bands that are, I wouldn't say they've flown under the radar with me, but, you know, they're on the periphery of it. Um, every time I listen to them, I think, yeah, I'm into this. And then, um, you know, then next time I, um, I put some music on it. Oh, uh, oh, Gary Moore. Yeah. Why not? Don't mind if I do. Um, rent to kill saying, how's your mouse problem going, John? Uh, well, it's not mice, it's rats. And, um, we've had the rat catcher out, uh, a couple of times and he's put some, um, I don't know what it is, some some kind of jollop down for them that, um, you know, not only uh, kind of makes them, um, you know, <laughs> go, go <clears throat> and, and uh, turn over deed, but um, it also makes them scurry off so that they don't kind of die behind your skirting boards. Um, I mean, we try, we try to be nice. We started off with the humane traps and they ignored those, no matter how much peanut butter we put in them. So then we went, well, okay, let's let's go for the not quite so humane, you know, the kind of spring-loaded wallop that you, you, you're dead. And they ignored those. So, you know, um, and the missus, well, she, she was getting like, you know, she was getting up at two o'clock in the morning to go downstairs and see if she could see any sign of them. She was, she was becoming like Elmer Fudd with a blunderbuss, you know, here, wabbit, 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 wabbit. Um, you know, so um, I thought, yeah, we need to get something done about this. So we called a pest control guy, and he seems to be getting on top of it. Um, the problem is that where they're getting into our property is in uh, the house that adjoins us. And um, they are, you know, they're getting in there because it, until a couple of days ago, it was vacant. And the, um, the, the, the it's it's like a rental property and the landlord is um what's the technical term um an asshole and um you know he he, he ask, expecting him to do anything about it is um <clears throat> you know like it's just not going to happen uh but anyway we we got into their adjoining yard and he's put some of this kind of stuff down for them and the people who who moved in the new tenants there seem to be uh, pretty uh, pretty reasonable people so i think we're on top of it um ian clark is saying uh still waiting for a rory gallagher solo on the monday video any chance i did do um i've done a couple of rory solos but it has been a while um the problem with a Rory Gallagher solo is that um, a lot of the studio recordings, when you listen to them, they are um, 
the, you, you listen to the solo, you think, okay, yeah, and then another guitar comes in on top, you know, kind of uh, almost like a punching, but you can still hear the original guitar underneath it. And, you know, you, 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 it's, it's very, I can imagine it being very um, time demanding to do a solo like that and the other thing about and the thing about his live recordings which is that you know that's where rory excelled didn't he you know i mean some of the the best rock and blues live albums um you know ever recorded i think uh you know have bear rory's name um you know the solos go on longer than a night shift you know um and it's again it's it that there's a lot of work involved and here's the thing right um the reason I do the Monday solo analysis videos is because it gets people contacting me for guitar lessons. Um, you know, they are not in terms of uh, what the YouTube algorithm seems to like from my channel. They're not big. You know, you, you look at, I always say, you know, make a video about taking a guitar out of a box, an unboxing video, you'll get 5,000 views. Make a video about... Uh, you know, kind of a, a guitar solo played on that guitar, you'll get 500 views. Um, so, you know, it's, I, I've got to look at it from, you know, a, a time management point of view is like, okay, it, if I'm going to put three or four days into making one video, um, it better get a lot of views. And quite often the, um, a lengthy solo video just, just doesn't, um, so you know the, that's I, I, I hate to sound mercenary about it, but that is a consideration because there's only you know so many hours in a day, and I'm very busy with lessons at the moment, um, and you know then there's the the um, you know the, the 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 rest of the stuff that I do. Um, it, it's I've got to carve out a big lump of time to make a video that not many people are going to watch. Um, but yeah, watch this space, Ian. Watch this space. I'm talking myself out of it, Ian. I don't want to because I, I, I would like to get my teeth into something like that. Maybe, um, yeah. We'll we'll, we'll see what happens uh, when the lottery lottery results come out. Uh, I'm one of those annoying people that if I won the lottery, um, I'd still keep on working. Um, oh, so David Evans saying the bots are in. just ignore them. The more you interact with them, the more they will kind of um, realize that they're being interacted with. Um, and, yeah, I see them. Um, uh, yeah, just just ignore the bots. Um, we get them, we get a, a few weeks sporadically every few months where they, where they kind of turn up here, but just ignore them. Um, um uh, Gary Hill is saying, uh, did you do a review of the Harley Benton ST 25th anniversary? No, I didn't, mate. Um, I, I just, I, the, the, the 25th anniversary thing with Harley Benton, it kind of bypassed me. Um, it was one of those kind of, uh, one of those products that everybody was doing reviews of. And it just, it would have seemed a bit like bandwagon jumping. To, to kind of jump on that, um, you know, and I, I just get the feeling that when, you know, unless you are like one of the really big YouTube channels, uh, which I'm not, it, if, if you're going to, um, it, if you're going to do a video on the same thing that all of the big guys are doing videos about, then you're probably just going to get lost in a, in a kind of sea of other videos on similar topics. Um, I did take advantage of the uh, of the Harley Benton um, sale, oh, and you've seen this guitar plenty of times. Um, under two hundred quid, and despite the fact that um, the uh, supposedly triple A flame maple top on it looks a bit more like um, you know a, an MFI kitchen countertop, um, this is a beast of a guitar. I absolutely adore this guitar. This. This guitar and the Les Paul and the PRS are probably the th one of the three guitars um, that I, I reach for on a regular basis. Um, you know, so it's in esteemed company. Um, 
Yeah, I see there's a lot of um, suggestions in there for how to deal with rats. I can tell you we have tried the vast majority of them. You know, the um, the, the kind of the bucket with the, uh, the, the peanut butter in. Um, you know, we've tried that. We've tried we've tried loads of things. People saying get a cat, yeah, that's gonna be fun with Dougal. Uh the <laughs> I'd be amazed if the house was still standing. Um if we if we tried um, you know, mixing uh feline and canine in this house. Um there'd be blood and snot and fur everywhere. Anyway, excuse me, chaps. Time for a refill. Um Dr. Gomez one is saying, aren't lurchers ratters? Uh, well, they are a hunting breed. Um, I don't know if they were specifically used for ratting. I thought I always thought that was like, you know, the little wiry terriers like um, Jack Russell's and Border Terriers and stuff. Um, and, you know, Dougal is only half lurcher. Anyway, um, he's half lurcher, half Labrador. Um, um uh, yeah, I can see that there's the bot there. I'm not going to block them because that is basically interacting, um, you know, interacting with them, and uh, we're just not going to do that. Um, Ian Stewart saying, my mate's band was called 10-inch stump and did not get much work. They're now called bread poultice and even less work. Is there anything... Um, I think you might have hit enter there before you meant to, mate. Uh, but carry on. Um, um, get a Jack Russell. Um, Gary Hill, it's a rat trap and you've been caught. Maiden man, uh, have you asked them politely to leave? The rats? Um, <laughs> um, no because they are rats and you know there are human beings that don't understand english english there are english human beings that barely understand english um so you know something that is you know a, a rodent vermin is um you know <laughs> what do you what do you suggest i do you know kind of um you know contact them via my solicitor <laughs> uh and Perhaps not a great, a great ploy. Um, <laughs> Nancy Davis is in. Blood, snot and fur everywhere. That's me and the wife on a Saturday night. <laughs> Catch one of the rats and release it. The rest will think the house is haunted and leave. Um, every video, every video that I put out, I always say... Last, one of the last things I say is, and don't forget the live stream every Friday, 5 p.m. UK time. We have a beer and we talk about music and guitars and whatever else crops up. I think we're into the whatever else crops up kind of territory now, aren't we, chaps? Um, uh, I'm not creative. What are you saying, mate? An old farmer once told me the way to get rid of rats. Not sure if it works and it's a bit cruel, but he told me if you catch one... Uh, to light them on fire, and then the scream would scare off the others. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, um, I don't think even I'm that callous, mate. You know, and um, I can just see that. Uh, that that's it. If I mention that to the missus, I can see that going down like a bucket of cold sick. To be honest with you, um, uh, can you do an interview with the rat? Um, uh, my cat hates me playing guitar, especially high notes. Uh, John, get the guitars out. Get might, might get rid of the rats. Well, speaking of such things, I, years ago on the channel, I did a, um, a, a solo that I called Howling Collie Blues uh, because we had a collie dog at the time, Taylor, bless him. Um, you know, this, this idea that uh, border collies are really intelligent. He, is he was proof that sometimes it skips a generation. Um, but... Um, yeah, I, uh, I was just jamming one day on, uh, on a kind of, I think a G minor blues and I was wailing away up the top end of the neck, having a fine old time. And he started doing that kind of, uh, ooh, kind of thing, howling, uh, like, like a, like a werewolf to the moon. Um, so 
I had another stab at the solo, recorded it, and uh, made a video out of it called Howling Collie Blues. Um, Budget pedal chap saying, uh, just imagine the fiery rat running back into your house. Probably not the best idea. And Peter Nicholson saying, yeah, RSPCA would probably like a word uh, word if you did that. Um, yeah, I imagine so, mate. Um, although um, I did have cause to contact the RSPCA a little while ago about a horse that had been abandoned and... Uh, the well let's just say the rspca if there's nothing to do they're the people for the job um you know and um i, I lost a lot of respect for them over that um um Sean House is saying, did you get anywhere asking that punk guitarist you were giving lessons to to come on the channel for an interview? Um <laughs> What happened was we were kind of in, in the middle of like a block of lessons and he had a tour coming up and he had to go away and do this tour. Um, and, um, you know, I'll be back in touch and he hasn't been yet, but when he, when he is, I can, I can possibly reveal the name of the band that he was in. He was, um, the main man from, um, a certain Belfast, um, punk band and, um, the main, found a member and singer-songwriter in, in that band. So draw your own conclusions of who that might be. But when he gets back in touch, I will uh, rattle his cage. Uh, I might rattle his cage before he does, actually. Um, Timbo, yes, you got it right there, mate. Stiff little fingers. Uh, uh, David Evans is going singing, John singing. That's about as close as I get. Uh, oh, and there's there, there's the bot again. Um, as I say, I found out through um, past experience that if you block them or try and kind of get rid of them, that that just kind of increases the problem. So everybody ignore the bot. Um, uh, what else we got to talk about? Um, uh, Um, John Max saying, have you thought about doing the re redoing the Kid Charlemagne solo? Last one five years old and no downloadable tab or backing track. Would appreciate a new one. Um, it's on the list, mate. It's on the list. Um, that might have to wait until... Um, well, um, solo. That one might have to wait until I know where I stand with this one because you know um, I don't know it might be it might be a um, we shall see we shall see uh, <laughs> ratatouille on the menu <laughs> he put basil in ratatouille um, you know faulty towers reference there uh, Peter Nicholson saying what bot um, indeed exactly it's it's somebody who's um, uh, there he is there. Now, um, uh, yes, indeed. <laughs> I don't know if it is a bot or if it's just a troll, but, you know, don't feed the troll is the, um, is the order of the, you know, it's somebody who thinks they're be it's somebody or something who thinks they're being, um, you know, kind of, uh, antagonizingly clever. And, you know, all I would say to them is, you know, You've let me down. You've let the head of house down. You've let the headmaster down. But more than anything else, you've let yourself down. There you go. Um, oh, Husky M6 is saying, uh, can't enjoy your beer because he has to drive. Well, I'm sorry about that, mate. Um, you know, but watch it on repeat. And have a beer with us then, and then you'll have the advantage of knowing exactly what my uh, what my answers are going to be. And um, you know, and, uh, you know, there's enough repeats on TV as well at, at the moment, isn't it? Think of it. Think of this when you watch it on catch up. Hello to anybody who's watching on catch up, by the way. Think of it as um, you know, classic John Robson. John Robson Gold, as it were. That's that's what they always do now. They don't say repeat, do they? Say classic. Or gold, you know. Uh, 
Um, uh, Pablo Hank saying, have you seen any footage of Paul Rose playing guitar, John? One of the best I've ever seen live. I haven't, mate, to be honest with you. That's um, that's a new one on me. Um, the, the reason I caught my um, my attention there was I, I was at college with a guy called Paul Rose. And, um, yeah, I don't think it's him. Something um, perhaps uh, per perhaps a, a, a case of mistaken identity. Um, what I will so say, though, is that, um, just to give this guy a bit of a shout out, uh, he has a, a very, very tiny YouTube channel. I don't know what he's like on other social media platforms because I'm not on those. Um, but if you ever get the chance to see a guy called Andy Power playing guitar, then just do yourself a favour. Go and see him. He is absolutely phenomenal. Check him out. There's a few YouTube videos with his uh, band called Soul Addiction online on YouTube. And he doesn't really kind of do much uh, stuff there. But if you get the chance to go and see him it, live, it, 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 you just, you know, he's, he's your archetypal session guitarist. So, you know, if, if you check out, um, you know, see who he's playing with these days. And even if it's not your taste in music, go and see him. He is an absolute monster guitar player. And, um, you know, I, I haven't spoken to him in, in ages because our our paths haven't crossed. But um, you know what a what a fantastic player. He can play like country like Albert Lee. He can play jazz like Barney Kessel. He can play shred metal like a cross between Ingve and and Joe Satriani. The fact that he isn't, you know, just on the cover of every guitar magazine is just an insane. He's just an incredible guitar player. Um. I, I would put him up there with um, someone like Guthrie, to be honest with you. Um, you know, and I'm, 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 that's not hyperbole. He is that good, um, and um, you know, it's it's so. Any, any chance I get to to kind of give him a, a shout out, I will. Um, uh, uh, what are you saying there, guitar bass dude? Uh, why am I never mentioned when you when you when your puntal? Um, well, um, I'm not sure what your puntal is, mate, but I'll give you the mention. Um, and uh, I didn't see you come in actually, uh, but uh, thanks for being here and enjoying a beer with us, mate. I hope you're having a beer. Um, Oh, there we go. Uh, why am I never mentioned when you talk about the greatest guitarists? Um, I've never heard you play, mate. Uh, you may you may be you know the pinnacle of of, of guitar. Um, you know, playing uh, evolution, and, and and I've never I've never heard you play. Um, so um, you know, just. Uh, if you fancy getting featured on the channel, chuck us some uh, some examples of your playing, and uh, you know maybe we can do something. Um, um, let's have a look. Um, John Maxing, anyone seen it? Anyone seen any, any interesting new Nam stuff? Uh, I've seen a few whispers about the uh, about the new PRS guitars, and the thing that everybody seems to be talking about is that. Um, They've tuned, changed the buttons on the tuning pegs. Uh, yeah, that's a that's pushing the envelope a little bit, isn't it? Um, so you know, but to, other than that, no, I haven't. Mate. That's uh, I've not seen anything. Um, about the new gear, but uh, to be honest, I don't tend to follow those trends anyway. Um, um, so. Uh, what are you saying there? Robbo, please stop pinching my mate Keith, a.k.a. Dave, from our Friday tea, tea time. Drink in pub. Always rushed off a beer clock. I'm doing it now, though. Good stuff. Nice to have you along, mate. Um, you know. Um, uh, what about the nylon uh, semi-hollow guitars that German guy reviewed? Uh, that German guy is probably Henning, isn't it? Um I haven't seen any of that stuff, mate. Um, I think there is an expectation that someone like me, who is on YouTube six days a week out of every seven, 
um, is all over YouTube and kind of keeps current with what's on YouTube. I don't. Why? Because I'm making YouTube videos six days out of every seven. You know, a typical day for me, okay? Um, I'm in here about 7.30 on a morning. Uh, my first lesson is usually about 10 a.m. So between 7.30 and 10 a.m., I'm tabbing stuff out. And I've got a backlog of stuff that I've got to get through this week, actually. Um, you know, for, for the, for the uh, um, Patreon uh, uh, chaps. So I'm, I'm tabbing stuff out or I'm making videos or I'm recording stuff. Or I'm doing a jam track for something. And then, you know, maybe 10 o'clock till 2 o'clock I'm doing lessons. Um, then 2 o'clock till 5 o'clock back into the YouTube kind of thing again. Um, you know, and at some point try and, like, eat food. Uh, then 5 o'clock through till 8 o'clock I'm, I'm back in the lessons again. So... At what point during that day do I get a chance to, um, to to watch YouTube videos? I used to have them on in the background a lot of the time when I'd be editing videos, but uh, I'm, I'm really into the audible audio books at the moment um, and just really enjoying that. And um, so I, I, as a result, I'm kind of less um in touch with what's going on in the, the guitar youtube universe than I, I guess i should be but um maybe i can do what steve cassidy does which is um you know uh watch more youtube and and try and kind of say that it's um you know <laughs> part of the creative process um John Channing saying, seen the new Gibson uh, tube combo vids, John. No, I haven't, mate, for, for the reasons I've just been describing. Um, I will talk about, um, you know, Gibson pricing, though. Um, you know, not now, but I've uh, I've recently uh, been put in contact with uh, Rexomatic, who I believe is in the chat, with another YouTuber, a chap called Audio More Music, Jim Engel. Uh, go and check out his channel. And uh, we, we, he's going to be helping me out on a on a solo analysis video in the near future. Um, and um, yeah, the, we had a bit of a, a kind of long form, well for for me for me anyway, long form kind of video chat uh, on Zoom, and that's going up on well, early February sometime. So check that out, and we do discuss Gibson and. Uh, specifically epiphone pricing in in that video um and we come to the same conclusions that many of you probably have come to as well um uh purple rocket triple uh, six is saying hello from germany have you heard francis rossi's book on audible i haven't mate i'm currently working my way through um books that i already kind of have read but didn't quite get um th there's an author i'm really into called robert goddard and a few of his books are um well they're all very kind of twisty kind of intricate plotted intricately plotted and you know i, I just knew when i'd read them that although i'd understood kind of the basic gist of it by the time i got to the end it was um you know, th th there was stuff that I'd missed, so I'm working my way through those on Audible. And I am actually as well in the in the process of writing another book myself. Uh, it's going to be called The Blues Guitar Bible, and you can expect that probably um, late spring, early summer kind of time. And, um, you know, same sort of content as Practical Music Theory for the Rock Guitarist, uh, the, 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 the book I put, put out last year, um, you know, sort of text, video content, audio content, accompanying and everything. And there will be more updates on that as uh, as time progresses. But we're over the hour, um, chaps. We, we, we've, we've gone over the hour. And um, I'm getting hungry and I've got a curry to go and order. So I'm going to go and uh, get on with that. So thank you once again. Don't forget, Steve Cassidy is live as we speak. Um, you know, his stream has started, so I won't keep it any longer. Go and watch Steve Cassidy on his channel, his excellent live streams. Hopefully he's uh, got the gremlins defeated and uh, he will be uh, regaling you with uh, all of his uh, wit and wisdom. Go and 
go and check Steve Cassidy out. But I'm done for now. Um, thank you once again for turning up and watching a fat, bold Northern lad talk absolute cobblers for an hour. It's been a blast, and I'll keep on doing it till you're sick of me. But for now, time, gentlemen, please. <laughs>